Praise the Lord, brethren, and good morning. I thank the Lord very much for this opportunity to bring us his word today. My name is Brother Thomas Mayo, yeah, an associate of the University of Eldoret Christian Union. Yeah, I was in the Christian Union and also in the University of Eldoret since 2013, and I left in 2017. And I thank God very much that once again he has given me an opportunity to bring to us his word and to share his revelation of his word today to all of us. So I want to invite you and today I was requested by the leadership of the union to share on the subject and changing God in the changing times. Yeah, and as I was and as I was trusting God for a word, yeah, the Lord gave me and placed in my heart the desire to edit a bit the topic. So the topic will be and changing God in ever-changing times. Let us pray. Our Father and our God who is in heaven, Lord Almighty, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Jehovah, that you have revealed the truth in your word, that God, we may know you, we may trust in you, and Lord, we may follow you. Today, Lord, this morning, as we hear from you, we pray, Daddy, that you may speak to us with the anointing of your authority, O oh God. We pray that you may speak to us forth your word, so that, Lord, we may know your will in this season, and that, God, we may obey you, O oh God. We want to thank you this moment, and we want to exalt your holy name, because you're a faithful God, and there is none else like you. Lord, as we share your word, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And changing God in ever-changing times. So, Basically, what we are going to look at this before we go through the entire study, we are going to have a scope of three key things. One, understanding the nature of times and seasons. We are trusting God today to understand what are, what are the nature of the times. Another thing, we want to also understand the character of God at all times. And another thing is... We also, we also, we are trusting God. I am trusting God to stir up us or to stir our faith to focus on God and not on the times. So, just on the introduction, and I'll start by saying this. The only constant, constant is something that doesn't change. Constant is something that remains the way it is. So, the only constant in life is change. I'm sure this statement is a bit ambiguous in, in itself. That change is something that is constant. This is often said to remind us that changes are expected and to be expected. We have to expect changes. We have to expect them to come at all times. We find this truth in real life where events are the top management. When you think about the entire society, when you think about management in the different organizations, they always undergo some change. Shareholders, regulatory policies in any country, even in our country, Kenya, policies do change. In the field of business, competitors, things do change in business. And also earth-shaking phenomena cause us to be totally unprepared for these changes. So it is true that changes come. But these changes at times they come with mixed reactions and different understanding of the same. And even that the one that is affecting the church of today and even us all. So hence, these changes at times might bring stress. They might bring distress. And host of such related issues affecting our physical life and also our spirituality. And so the question is, as we go through this study, how should we respond to the different changes or other changing times as we are seeing in the world today? Another thing to note is that, so what do we do when changes take place and catch us unaware? And I can pause by saying, I remember the time that COVID came. Many people were saying this thing has gotten us unaware. None had prepared for this. And many people found themselves in different Situations that were not good. There were job losses, schools were closed, students were in miserable places. And even, even these university students, they ended up going home with a lot of uncertainties. 
what about our university course? What about when are we graduating? And there were so many questions in the minds of different people. And so we find some people in the world, they end up doing things which are not godly. They engage in drugs, they engage in alcoholism, and also in religious experiments. And finally, sad, some people have even engaged in suicide because of the changes that is ever happening in the world of today. When this takes place, the question is, is God being unfair and caring and shifting in allegiance? This is something that arises in the mind of everybody. Is God still the same God as he promised in the backing to Moses, to Abraham, that he will keep his promise to all the generation? So we ask ourselves, in these old seasons, is God being unfair to the world? Is God being unfair to the churches? I remember during COVID that we were all advised not to go to church. We were to stay at home and do our own fellowships. And we were wondering, is God shifting his own allegiance? Is God shifting his own word? Some people who are critical of the Bible claim that God, who created the world and then destroyed the world in half of his anger, shows that God is capable of changing. And it is sad to say this, that some people have misquoted God and they have said because even in the Bible, there are sometimes God destroyed his people. They, they kind of tell us that God will one day change. And some have even, are even quoted that this time, God has changed. And what does the Bible, when we look at the Bible, what does the Bible tell us about unchanging God in changing times? And when I was preparing this, the Lord placed in my heart the text in the book of Genesis, chapter 37 and verses 1 to 36. And I am inviting us to read. And I'm going to read for us using the NIV version. And this is the text about Joseph. Joseph. We know Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob. And the Bible says that he was the beloved. He was loved by Jacob. So, and the Bible says in verses 1, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob's family. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flock with his brothers, the sons of Bilha and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now, Israel loved Joseph. I want you to underline this. Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made an honest robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. So these brothers of him, the 11 of them, they hated him. And they said, you want to rule over us. Verses 5 says, Joseph had a dream. And when he told to his brothers, they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were all binding sheaves of grain out in the field. When suddenly my sheep rose and stood upright on your sheaves, gathered around mine and bowed. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule over us? And they hated him. Then he had another dream and he told to his brothers, listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowing down to me. When he told his father, I love this very much, when he told his father as well as his brothers. So he went ahead, spoke to his father, spoke to his brothers. His father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will you, will your mother and I and your brothers actually bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous, but his father kept the matter in his mind. So, the story goes, now we are in verses 12. Now his brothers had gone to grace their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, 
I may go and send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, go and see all is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring the word back to me. So his father sent this young man to go and see his brothers. And in verses 15, and in verses 15, the Bible says, when Joseph arrived in Shechem, where his brothers were, a man found him wandering around in the field and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I am looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They, they, they have moved from here. The man answered, I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. And they saw him in a distance. And before he reached to them, they plotted what evil brothers, what kind of evil brothers that he was having. Here comes the dreamer. This is what they said. The brothers told each other, come now, let us kill him and throw him into the season. And say to the furious animals, devoured him. And then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let us not take his life. Do not shed any blood. Throw him into the system here in the wilderness. But do not lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him. So the story goes. And I will jump. And I will, and I will go to verse 30, 30, 28. So when the Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph out of the system and sold him for 20 shekels, imagine selling your brother at only 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the system and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. Reuben loved his brother because they were born of the same mother. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph robes slaughtered a goat, dipped the robe into the blood. Then they took the ornament robe back to their father and said to him, we found this. Examine it and see whether it is your son. He recognized it and said, it is my son's robe. So furious animals have devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and put on a sackcloth and mourned for his son many days all his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. What the love of the father. And so his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianite sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar and one of the Potiphar's officials, the captain of God. And this continues that we see Joseph we see here Joseph being sold by his brothers. Now he had been sold to the Midianites and now the Midianites have sold him to the Potiphar's house. And we know what happened to the Potiphar's wife as you continue reading downwards the, the following scriptures. So Potiphar, this man was put just as a captain of God. And there is a day this Potiphar wife tried to have an affair, sexual affair with him. But Joseph refused. Joseph refused. Joseph refused. So, jo Joseph, Joseph went and he was sold and he, and this time the Potiphar wife wanted to have an affair with him as I had said earlier. But he refused and said, I cannot sin against my God. Because Joseph knew in his heart that by sleeping with Potiphar's wife, the wife of his master would be a sin not only against his master, but also against his God. And so in all this, when we get through the story of Joseph, and we continue all through, you realize God was still with Joseph. Despite the time that was changing in his life, there are very many seasons that was changing in his life. But because there is something that God had purposed in the life of Joseph, he remained with Joseph. And that is why as we continue in the scripture, you will realize that later on, Joseph becomes a prime minister and he becomes a great help even to the land of, of his father, Canaan, whereby they came, all of them, to be given food by him. And at this time, the king was saying, 
that all authority, anything regarding to food, I have given it to Joseph. What a great thing. This man who was a dreamer had really worked with God in all the times that were not easy. Imagine being sold by your brothers. Despite even the elder brother insisting, insisting that we, we need to, we need not to, not to shed blood of this young man. But the brothers chose to sold him. And so, this reminds us of one thing, that God was with Joseph. So according to this verse, this text of Genesis, we find that Joseph was greatly loved by his father, but greatly hated and envied by his brothers, to the extent that they planned to murder him. Joseph suffered for 13 years before he became Pharaoh's right-hand man. When he was sold into slavery in Egypt, his world became slightly better before it changed in a nightmare of a prison. So whereas things started changing, he found himself because the Potiphar's wife lied that he wanted to rape him and he was taken back to prison. And he suffered for 13 years as we read from the scripture. During those 13 years, Joseph's world changed three times. Some people would have ended their lives with a perception that Jehovah God has abandoned and forgotten them. I don't know if it was you, if it was me, in the situation of Joseph. Would you have stood faithful to God for those 13 years? Yet we read that Joseph believed in the goodness of God and that God never abandoned him. When you read Genesis 41, especially verses 51 and 52, you will see that. And again, Genesis 50 and verses 20. Towards the end of his life, he confidently told the children of Israel that God would take them out of Egypt to Canaan, the promised land. What the kind of faith that Joseph had in God. He knew very well that God had promised him that one day, one time, he will, God will still take them back to the land of Canaan. He knew, he didn't know the specific time when this will come, but he knew very well that it will happen as the Lord had purposed. So what can we learn from Joseph's life? Despite his world being turned upside down three times, Jehovah God never changed his purpose towards Joseph. God remains steadfast in his promise to Abraham to keep Joseph safe. God's purposes are never swayed any time even in our lives. Now, understanding the nature of times and seasons. One key thing that we have to understand, brethren, is that times will always change. Praise the name of the Lord. Times that we live today, tomorrow, and forever, they will keep on changing. From history, time has changed. We read of the many things that have happened, even in the world of Christianity, the things that have changed. When we look at countries, when we look at different sectors of the economy, things are changing. Like, for example, today, in the education sector in our country, they are now changing the 844, and they are thinking of the upcoming CBC, whereby they are saying this is the kind of education system that is more into the abilities of an individual, less of the cognitive. Business sector is changing, the rising cost of living. Health sector is increasing, health sector is changing. It's not constant that there is always the increase of lifestyle diseases. And child of God, times will change always, but the question remains, how should we respond or act in these times? When the seasons are changing, when the times are changing, how should we respond? And one thing that I must submit to us by the grace of God is that we have to understand the character of God at all times. And I am interested in a text in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 16, verses 1 and 10. And this is about a king of Israel, known as King Asa. King Asa, when you read his story, when you read his story, you will realize that Asa are among the people who started very well, who started very well, but the ending was not that good. And I will read in verse 16. In the 36th year of Asa reign, Asa's reign, Basha king of Israel went up against Judah and a fortified Ramah to, pre to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa king of Judah. 
And then verses 2, Asa then took silver and gold out of the treasuries of the Lord's temple. Mark that. He took them from the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace and sent it to Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, and as between my father and your father. See, I am sending you silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. And I will jump to verses 7. At that time, Hanani the seer, and we know the work of the seer in them, in the Israelites then, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, because you relied on the king of Aram and not on your God. Mark this. At this time, King Asa relied on the, his treaty between him and the king of Aram and not on God. The army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Cushites and the Libyans a mighty army with great words and chariots and horsemen? Yet, when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. And verses 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Hallelujah. The eyes of God, I love this very much, that the eyes of God are throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on, you will be at war. And I'm telling you, read, read the, the following scriptures that are following that. That is verse, verse 10 downwards. And you will realize that King Asa did not have a good ending. Why? Because he changed his allegiance. Brethren, the encouragement is this. That the true character of God is that God is constantly moving through the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are committed to him. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know whether your heart is committed to God this morning. I don't know whether you're committed to giving your allegiance to God. Because if you're doing that, the Bible clearly records that the eyes of God, it is written in his word, that the eyes of God are on these people. And again in the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 3, verses 8 to 12, the Bible says, Finally, all of you be like be like-minded. Be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with a blessing. Because to this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep himself, must keep his tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his eyes are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Praise the name of the Lord. There are another encouragement that we are getting here on the true character of God is that one, his eyes are on the righteous. His ears are attentive. Even in the times that seasons are changing, times are changing, things are becoming in a way that we cannot understand. The eyes of God are on his righteous. And his ears are attentive to his prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. And again, Romans 8, 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things worketh good for those, for, for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his power. Praise the name of the Lord. Nothing should scare us. Nothing should worry us. Even on the time that seasons are changing, the, only, the hope that we have as believers is that our God is there with us. And the Bible says, and the Bible says that we have, we have what we have learned from Genesis 37, we, 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 we note about four or three things that I'm going to mention in reference to Genesis 37. One is that God is faithful regardless of the times. God gives us his word to help us stand firm. Brethren, we have the word of God to enable us to stand firm and pray with strength against the enemy. 
that firm faith and powerful prayer life are built on the truth of the word of God. Brethren, you cannot stand firm if you don't depend on the strength that is God-given. He gives us strength so that we may be able to stand firm at all times. As we saw in the life of Joseph, despite all those challenges, the three seasons that he underwent in his life, but we still saw that he stood firm to the glory of God. In Ephesians chapter number 6, verses 10 to 17, we all know that putting on the armor of God. And particularly in verse 17, the Bible says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Brethren, in the times of hardship, in the times of in the times that are changing seasons that are not, we are not understanding what is really happening. Let's be reminded of one important character of God that is faithful regardless of all the times. Number two, let's be reminded that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's according to Hebrews chapter 13, verses 7 to 8. And Paul tells the leaders in his final exhortation to the church of, in the Hebrew, he tells them, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome. Consider, their, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Brethren, it is important that we have trusted in the Lord. We have trusted in him who will never change. We have trusted in him who will remain loving to us forever. We know we are sure of that. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, he spoke himself. And he said, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Brethren, our God our God will never change. Another thing to note is that another true character of God that will help us in the times that are changing is that our God is the creator, is the controller, and is the owner of the universe. We are not of our own. We, we are not in this world by accident. We are not where we are because we are just there. But we are there because it is by the authority of God. It is God that has allowed it to happen in our life. The creation story in the book of Genesis reveals to us of God's authority of the earth and the heavens. That is the controller. The heavens belongs to him. The Bible says the heavens is, the heavens is his sitting place. The heavens is his dwelling place. And the earth is his footstool. In Deuteronomy 10, 14, I love this word. The Bible says, Behold, to the Lord your God belongs the heaven and the highest heaven, the earth and all that is in it. Human beings included, we belong to God. And again in Psalm, the psalmist say, O oh Lord, that is Psalm 104 verses 24, O oh Lord, how many of your works in wisdom you have made them. The earth is full of your possession. David, when he was looking at the earth, he was looking at the earth full of the possession of God. And that is where we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verses 26. The Bible tells us, For the earth is of the Lord's and all in it. Praise the name of the Lord. Again in Psalm 24 verses 1, the earth is the Lord's and all it contains and those who dwell in it. Brethren, we are not in the world by accident. Praise the name of the Lord. I love the Lord very much because when he created us, he placed us in this world by his design will and his design purpose for our life. So we should not be shaken. We should not be worried when things are changing. How should we be responding? We need to be reminded 
that we are here because God designed it for us. So, what does this tell us? What is the implication of this word to us and to even our faith? Number one is that when what is the call or what can we do in the changing times? Brethren, I'm talking to us this morning with a lot of confidence in my heart in the promises of God that is in his word. Number one is that we need to put our focus in God. One thing that the enemy will always invest in any season and times that are changing and they are not good, like even in the one that we are in now in the pandemic, is that he will put a lot of fear, he will put a lot of anxiety, he will put a lot of confusion in the church and more so in the believers, so that our focus will not be in the Lord, but our focus will be in our situation. But brethren, this morning, God is calling us to put our focus in him. Praise the name of the Lord. If Joseph had not remained focused on God, what God had purposed in his life could never come to pass. I want us to agree with this, that if Joseph could not have accepted that this is what the Lord has said, and this is what I'm going to abide by it, it is not going to happen. I'm reminded again, the journey of the children of Israel, the many things that they underwent. And one thing that I learned, according to Exodus 14, verses 13 to 14, Moses spoke to the people, don't be afraid. This is according to Message Bible. Don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation for you today, not any other day. Take a good look. He tells them, take a good look to the Egyptian behind us because you will never see them again. And he encourages by saying them, by saying to them, God will fight your battles. I love this version. And you keep your mouth shut. And I will say, and keep your heart or your mouth be still. So we need to be still and follow God's voice. What is God telling you in this season? What is God telling you in those unche those changing times? Is that we ought to be still and follow the voice of God. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. The Bible says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help to help us in the time of need. Brethren, in the changing times, the only thing we need is to go, is to come to God. Go to God with a desire to obtain mercy and to find grace. Just telling Daddy, we need you, O oh God. We need your grace in this situation. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalmist in the book of Psalm 11. In the Lord, this is what he said, I take refuge. How can they say of me, flee like a bird to the mountain? And verses, verses 3 says, when the foundation are being destroyed, what can the rushes do? Another version says, when the foundations are shaken, what can the rushes do? The Lord is in holy temple and the Lord is, in, is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examines them. The Lord examines the rushes, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates them. Brethren, when the foundations are shaken, the rushes ought to pray. Pray for one another. Pray for the nations. Pray for the church. This morning, we ought to pray for the nations. We ought to pray for the church of God. Just pause a bit and think of nations like India. People are dying. They are announcing of over, over 2,500, 3,000 deaths in a day. And these are people that we all know that they are not believers. It is very sad, even in the eyes of God, to see these people die. Brethren, let us pray. In the, in the times that are changing, we ought to pray. For us to remain steadfast, we must commune with God at our closest. Read his word. Engage in fellowship and prayer. Brethren, we must call each other. We must hold each other into account of how we are communing with God, of how we are engaging in the fellowship, of how we are praying. All we need is to be tuned to our master. When you wake up in the morning, you just ask God, Master, speak. 
Thy servant is here to listen. I am here to know what you have to say for me today in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's be under the control of the Holy Spirit and depend on him for guidance. Brethren, in times that are changing, in the pandemic like this one, there's nothing greater that we need than just be under the control of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's not yield to fear of unknown. Let's not yield to fear of the future. You ask yourself as a student, how will it be with my career? You had calculated your years that I need to be finishing by this year. By 2021, I must be through with my degree and do other things. Maybe come back for masters. Do what a few things. You're asking yourself, how will it be? Brethren, let's not yield. This is the deception of the enemy. This is not the will of God. But for us, let's be focused and yielded to the truth of God. Praise the name of the Lord. As we come to a conclusion, as we come to a conclusion, what the very key thing that I want us to, rem to remind ourselves today is that in any season, in any seasons that are changing, as we have been seeing in the world of today, very many things are changing. Life is becoming unpredictable. Life is becoming, you can't even imagine how my tomorrow will be. What is very important in this situation is let us be under the control of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Depend on the guidance of the Spirit. Depend on the power of the Spirit. In, our, in your day-to-day -day activities, depend on God. Depend on His power. Praise the name of the Lord. And I conclude by saying, we live in dangerous times. We live in unpredictable world. Yet, we can still have joy. Praise the name of the Lord. We can still have joy. And the, our joy is in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 6 and verses 19. And the Bible says that when God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater than him, he swore, to, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said, puts to an end all the argument. Because God wanted to make the answer.